I'm here in Albany Township, Maine, with Edna York, and she's the oldest woman in, in the, the area. In the area, and I guess that's the the surrounding counties and all. And Edna, how old are you? 103. Mm -hmm. Where were Almost you? Almost 104. If I lived till December 27. I'll be 104. Well, of course you will. I expect to see you next summer. Bring you hot dogs. No, you won't. I won't see you next summer? No, I doubt it. Why is that? I doubt it very much. But who knows? You know? Sure, only God knows, right? That's right. Where were you born? In Lewiston. And, and uh, you played the organ in the church? I played the organ here for 38 years. That's wonderful. Do you have children? Mm -hmm. I had five, but one died about six years ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. He was my oldest. So tell me what it's like living up on top of this beautiful mountain. Have you lived here all your life? A lot different than it is now. There were no forests around. It was all open land. Oh, it was all open land, really? Mm -hmm. So people were farming here? Full of farmers. <clears throat> all the forests you see were once meadows. And... That's remarkable. What did they grow here? Was it uh, just row crops or corn? Not commercially. They grew for the, their own use. And it was more or less of a... They were just little individual farmers. Farms. Once in a while they would bring butter or eggs or something to the store to swap the groceries, you know, for flour or sugar or whatever they need. But everybody lived off the land back then. And they were able to do it, huh? The nearest store would have been in Bethel. Wow. And in the horse and buggy days, you can go to Bethel. That, that would, that'd be a big hop in a horse and buggy, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. So tell me how you met your husband. He was going to school the same as I, in the same high school. But he was a class below me. So we act, I actually knew him in school. Was your, was your husband a farmer also? Mm -hmm. Well, his folks were. He lived up in the Galloway. That's up beyond the New Hampshire border. But he came down to go to Gould Academy because they had no high school up there. Oh, wow. So he lived way out, huh? Mm -hmm. He was in the backwoods. Did he take you back to his cabin with him? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, He we, was only 18. But so when did you, how old were you when you got married? What? How old were you when you got married, Edna? Where did we get married? No, how old were you when you oh, got I married? Was, I was just about 21, and he was 20. And back then, you couldn't get married unless you were 21 without your father's permit. So he had to get his father's permit to marry me. The, and, and the father, I guess, acquiesced? He did. He didn't, he he didn't think do you were, it quick enough. <laughs> he didn't think you were trouble, huh? No. Good for him. <laughs> did you guys live here in Albany? Did, did you and your husband live here in Albany together? No. We lived in Andover for a while. Andover? Mm -hmm. And then we moved to Bethel. Okay. We moved to Bethel for quite a number of years. What was your husband's work? Well, he was, he 
did all kinds of things. He was <coughs> road commissioner for the town of Bethel, and he was also a select man, and he worked in the woods. He took on lumbering jobs. You have to be resourceful to, to survive here, don't you? the Depression. Yes, ma'am. Um, it was very hard when we first married for him to find anything to do. But we survived, as you can see. Well, it looks like you survived pretty well. You've got a beautiful, beautiful home here on top of the mountain. Yes, it is. So now, I got to ask you the most important question of all. What have you learned from your life? What, what advice would you give to people? To thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. And what does that mean to you? It means just be honest, be forthright. Don't try to be what you are. To yourself, be true. There's a lot to be said for that, isn't mm. it? It takes courage sometimes to be mm. honest, doesn't it? That's from Shakespeare. Yes, ma'am. So if you had it to all do over again, would you do anything differently in your life? Who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> I can't know a lot of it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not fair, is it? That's a cute you, answer. You that's a, that's a wonderful experience. answer. Yeah, sure it is. Yeah, of course. That's How else would you answer? Right, <laughs> right. the sad part is you don't get the chance to go back. Yeah, isn't that a shame? That's That seems very unfair, doesn't it? So what's your favorite memory about, about being a kid and growing up here? My favorite memory is just being back in that little house across the road. And it was a lot different when I was a child because it has changed hands a number of times. I bet it was well and kept when you lived there. They have put yeah, when, when we lived there, it was just the upstairs, it was just one big uh, open chamber, except for one end where our bedroom was finished off. But the rest of it was just one big open chamber. But people that have bought there have converted that into, I think there are two or three bedrooms upstairs now. Yes. And they put on an extra addition, that little part to the right was added. The porch was that we didn't have a porch. What we had was just the one main building, and that was an old, old building. It was built by one of the first settlers of Albany, and it was put up on the mountain. Huh. That's where they lived. <clears throat> and after they died and it passed on to somebody else, they didn't want it on the mountain. They wanted it down where there was more going on. So they moved it down, I understand, with oxen. Uh -huh. Wow. From the mountain down here. What a story. Yeah. That's great. Thank you for sharing that with me. Yeah, you're welcome. Now, my favorite, the favorite memory is my childhood spent right out here in the country where I had the fields to roam around in, and I could go anywhere and not be afraid. Neighbors took care of neighbors, and we children could go anywhere. Somebody was always watching out for us. The only restriction that I had was my mother would say, now you get you, Girls, my sister, I had a sister about a year and a half younger than I, so we were like twins. And she would say, now you can go out to play where you want to go, 
But don't go so far that you can't hear me holler. <laughs> That's good advice, isn't it? Yeah. So, because she said I might need you, or you might need me, and I want to be able to hear your voice, told them. But it was a very, very happy time. That's nice. So what do you think about the modern world? It's not getting better. That would take me half the morning. <laughs> Go into that. Yep. Well, I don't think you'd get anybody that would disagree with you on that comment. Mm. Unfortunately. It's sad to watch, isn't it? Yes, it is. Very sad for me. To see the contrast of how things were when I was a child, growing up, to what it is today. So if you had any any wishes that you could, could offer for the planet, what, what would that be? For the planet? For, for, for humanity. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> Don't mess with it, huh? Look what we're doing to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's terrible, isn't it? I'm sure you have a lot of respect for nature growing up the way you did. Oh, yes. And there wasn't a river that was polluted around here. They were all you could drink out of any river. That and that's all changed in your just your one Make life, small. hasn't it? And money became king. I was thinking during right now during hunting season, when I was a child. <clears throat> Growing up, there was no game law. You could go out and shoot a deer any time, but people did not do that. They respected, as you said, nature. And they did at this time of year. This was a time when the men went hunting. And they had to go hunting because it was very important that everybody got a deer. They'd make it through the winter. Provide them a lot of their meat. Sure. Yeah. And you, that's the only way they had it because you couldn't go to the store unless somebody was butchering a cow or a pig. Or, of course, you had that, but you always needed, always needed a deer. And I can remember that quite often, and you could shoot as many as you wanted to. Right. They very seldom shot more than one. Occasionally, they would shoot too if they knew there was a neighbor that wouldn't be able to go out to hunt, mm -hmm. and they'd hunt for deer for that neighbor. Mm -hmm. It's say neighbors took care of neighbors. You know, a lot to be said for that, isn't it? And they don't do that now. No, no, it's that's a, a, it's a rare world. occurrence, isn't you it? You get what you can and to the dickens with anybody else. Yeah. That, that's a shame, isn't it? But because they respected nature, they didn't have to have the law. You don't need law if you have respect, do you? I, <clears throat> well, I want to thank you for sharing your life with us in your home and... and uh, Well, I wish you, welcome. I wish you a long and wonderful life, and I know you've already had a wonderful life. Thank you, Edna. Well, there's much left to it.